Hey everybody. So one of my favorite things to do in a Super Mario Maker is speedrunning. And I wanted to make a video showing off a lot of the tips and tricks I've learned to optimize a world record. This ended up being my longest video yet, so let's just get right into it. The first thing to know is that generally speaking, Mario accelerates faster on the ground than he does in the air. It may seem like it wouldn't matter if Mario goes over the top path or the bottom path. However, as you can see, Mario does not reach full speed until he is already underneath the block. This is especially true in 3D World, where running far enough will give Mario an extra speed boost. For levels where this is not possible, try to get as much run as you can. After reaching full speed, it's important to maintain this by constantly moving forward in a straight line whenever possible. Now probably the most important step is routing. As we can see from this level, if I play through it normally, I get to the end and there's a bomb excavation section, which is a very slow and tedious process which wastes a lot of time. However, by performing a carefully routed triple jump, we can see that it is barely possible to make it over to the lift, meaning that when we make it to the final key door, we already have a key, allowing us to skip the entire final section. When planning out a route, there's a lot of trial and error in seeing what will or won't work. There are also a lot of small and subtle techniques that can be used to save time, which is what the remainder of this video is going to be about. Because Mario takes time to accelerate to full speed, it's beneficial to use a technique that allows Mario to almost immediately reach full speed. The first of these is the wall kick. By jumping off the wall, Mario will very rapidly reach full speed, allowing us to save a considerable amount of time. It's also worth noting that during the duration of the wall jump, Mario will only be at about 95% speed and does not reach full speed until after reaching the peak of his jump, meaning that the smaller the wall jump, the better. Very similar to this is the Yoshi back tongue. It's performed by sticking Yoshi's tongue out and then immediately pressing the opposite direction to start accelerating. In 3D World, you can get a small head start by doing a short crawl before attempting to swim. A common thing to see in dash style levels is a falling sideways spring to give Mario a speed boost. While this does help Mario reach full speed faster than normal, there's actually an even faster way to reach full speed with this setup. Jumping into the sideways spring will give Mario a speed boost sooner. Think of it as meeting the spring halfway. Oh. 
Another way to quickly reach full speed is by ground pounding into a slope. The biggest exception to the very first tip is ice. Because ice is so slippery, Mario takes a little bit of time to gain traction before accelerating to full speed. To avoid this slowdown, do a very small jump in the air. This allows Mario to avoid slipping on the ice when trying to accelerate. When it comes to the different kinds of slopes, each one has a completely unique speed when it comes to running or sliding down them. I've listed them in order from slowest to fastest. If remembering this order is too much, just keep in mind that you should avoid steep slopes at all costs and run or slide down gentle slopes when possible. Really the only exception to this rule is in 3D World. While sliding down a gentle slope may be faster in the short run, because it resets the run boost, it's actually slower if you're traveling a greater distance. While only traveling in a straight line may be preferable, it's inevitable that Mario will eventually have to change directions. With this in mind, what is the most efficient way to do this? Well, the answer depends on which game style you are currently playing. In the first three game styles, the fastest method to turn around is by jumping into a wall and then changing directions mid-jump. The reason this works is because when Mario normally tries to change directions, he must first decelerate before then accelerating in the opposite direction. However, by slamming into a wall, Mario will immediately hit zero speed, allowing you to instantly start accelerating in the opposite direction. As for NSMBU in 3D World, similar to earlier in the video, the fastest way to change directions is by jumping to the wall and then performing a small wall jump. This method is actually considerably faster than the previous one. When coming to a drop off on a ledge, most people will probably just run off as such. Instead, what you want to do is jump down the corner so that Mario partially clips into the wall. This will allow you to save a small amount of time. When coming across a reverse momentum conveyor belt, Try to maintain as little contact as possible. By landing on the conveyor belt and then immediately jumping off, there will not be enough time to slow Mario down. Very similar to this is slopes. Running up a slope will cause Mario to significantly slow down. Likewise, this can be prevented by having as little contact with the slope as possible. It's even possible to perform a triple jump up a slope if done efficiently enough. Let's take a look at this speedrun course. Ground pounding will cause Mario to descend faster than normal, but it's not enough to finish the course, so let's see what else we can do to save time. The first time save we can do is jumping out of the ground pound. This will allow Mario to get off the ground quicker than normal. However, this run is still not completely optimal. The next time save we can do is what is known as the ground pound cancel. After starting the ground pound descent, press up to cancel the ground pound just before landing on the ground, allowing us to finally complete this level.
Sometimes, it's not just enough to simply optimize a level. Instead, you need to move faster than normal. One thing that is faster than running in 3D World is Cat Mario's dive. Unfortunately, the problem is, as soon as you land on the ground after performing a dive, Mario briefly slows down, negating any of the time you save. To fix this, what we can do is perform a long jump immediately after diving, and as you can see, this prevents Mario from slowing down after landing on the ground. I've also uploaded a practice level of this trick if you'd like to try it out. Cape Mario is not only useful for flying over entire sections, but it's also slightly faster than just running anyways. When coming across a water level, Mario is able to move faster by grabbing and holding onto an item. This also applies if Yoshi swallows the item while Mario is on him. Going off this, in forest levels, when Mario enters the water, he will very briefly pause before beginning the swim. This can be bypassed by sliding into the water while holding an item. Although it'd be best to just avoid the water at all costs if possible. When it comes to auto-scrolling levels, you may think the only way to possibly save time is by hugging the screen and trying to touch the goal as soon as possible. And while it certainly is a big factor, there's actually another less known way to save time, and that's by... Dying? You heard that right. If you manage to come across a level with a checkpoint, dying immediately after touching it can actually save a considerable amount of time. The reason for this is that when Mario respawns, he does so in the center of the screen right at the checkpoint. This basically means that the screen moved forward about 10 blocks without the timer ever running down. From there, we just have to make sure we grab the flag as soon as possible like before, and that's the new world record. So something most people probably don't know about conveyor belts, lava lifts, etc. is that the speed boost given persists until Mario once again touches normal ground. Therefore, it's important to try to have as much airtime as possible to maximize how long Mario has his speed boost. One of my favorite tricks is something I call P-Boosting. Performing a P-Switch drop in midair will give Mario a small push forward. Of course, doing a midair P-Switch jump would be even more beneficial due to maximizing this high-speed airtime. Likewise, this does also work with spring or pow jumps, however it's not quite as efficient as doing it with a P-switch. These next few tips aren't necessarily faster, per se, but they do help prevent you from losing time. We all know the feeling of having a very good speedrun, and then suddenly... Stairs. Stairs can be the bane of many speedruns, so I will show you how I approach doing them. After jumping near the base of the stairs, try to aim for a specific block, and then just before landing, do a quick left-right on the controller, to very briefly slow down. After landing on the block, very quickly jump off 
within maybe one or two frames to avoid clipping into the next block. It's worth noting that it is possible to do a stair jump without any turnbacks if you need to save an extra frame or so. However, in the long run, it's better to sacrifice one frame to do the stair jump correctly than to smash into the block and lose all your speed. When flying as Raccoon Mario, your P speed will slowly run out, which will cause you to increasingly slow down. This can be avoided by doing a tail swipe just before pressing the jump button. This is done by rolling your thumb from Y to B in one quick motion. If you can't quite get the hang of that, simply mashing both buttons at the same time will still be better than not doing anything at all. Another common thing to see in levels is the use of sideways springs to turn around. The problem is, if you're not perfect, you may accidentally start turning around before hitting the spring, causing Mario to briefly slow down. Oh, no. The simple solution for this is that when coming across the sideways spring, jump into the air and go neutral on the controller, meaning do not press any direction on the control pad. And only after hitting the sideways spring should you then start pressing the direction you're traveling. Very similar to that is throwing objects while touching the ground. This is due to the fact that in order to throw the item, you must first let go of the run button, which can cause Mario to slow down. Of course, it's still possible to throw an item without slowing down, however more than likely, you're going to lose a frame or two without even noticing. The solution to this problem is quite easy. Simply jump into the air, and then throw the item. This is due to the fact that letting go of the run button will only make Mario slow down while he's on the ground. These last few tricks can help you save one frame each. Now one frame might not seem like a lot, however it can be the difference between tying a world record or setting a new one. The first of these we're going to be going over is corner boosting. This is done by jumping into the corner of a block from below. The reason this works is because Mario is trying to partially clip into the wall, and Nintendo programmed the game to push any object inside the wall out, as you can see here. This trick is very useful because it can be used multiple times in the same level. Something that might not be so obvious in 3D World is that holding down while on a donut block will cause it to fall one frame faster. This is very similar to a trick that was in the original Super Mario Maker, where holding forward in the original game styles would cause it to fall one frame faster. This next trick is a little hard to explain, but when Mario starts moving in a one block tall space, performing two small jumps after you start moving can actually allow you to save a small amount of time. In the Super Mario World game style, this can also be done with a small spin jump at the start of the level. Now actually saving time with this trick can be quite difficult, so you don't see it used too often. A neat fact about the Super Mario form is that he's wider than Small Mario. Now while most people may know this, what you may not know, this actually lets you finish the level one frame faster than before. So if you're able to get a power up without slowing down, this can help you save some time. And of course this also applies to other power ups, such as the Big Mushroom. Finally, something I just learned while recording this video 
is that this also kind of applies to Cat Mario. Except that the difference is between crawling or jumping. When jumping in the air as Cat Mario, he's actually slightly wider than he is before, allowing you to save one frame when jumping into the flagpole. It ended up taking me quite a while to finish, so I really hope you guys enjoyed this. And if you guys are interested in trying out these skills, there is a world record race every Sunday at 4 p.m. Eastern in the Super Mario Maker Discord server, which I will leave a link to in the description below. If you guys enjoyed the video, consider subscribing, sharing the video, and maybe follow me on Twitter if you guys want to see some additional videos that don't end up on YouTube. And as always, thanks for watching.